the circulating levels of DHT in response to testosterone therapy do not correlate with those found in androgen sensitive tissues like the prostate and skin, for example. All right. So, you know, so Stephen, you're a dermatologist and uh, a great one, by the way. But so that transdermal cream, there's a lot of confusion when it comes to DHT levels. Do you not agree? Exactly. Yes. People, that, that's one of the comments I see under the videos most of the time. Um, well, Doc, uh, you're bold, and that's probably because of the uh, high DHT right. levels. Uh, I was bold before uh, TRT, of course, but uh, that's the that's the comments. Right. Well, well. So, so you can correct me in anything that we're about to talk about, of course, because you're uh, a brilliant mind, a scientist yourself. So, look. So, let's talk about the normal range for DHT, for instance, at LabCorp, which is our most popular lab over here. Really, is is thirty to eighty five nanograms per deciliter. Now, I hope men understand that no matter what method of delivery you get for testosterone, it's going to raise DHT. When you raise levels of testosterone, free testosterone, you're going to raise levels of DHT. That's how testosterone works. Testosterone works through its active metabolites. That's why they're called active metabolites. It does. Every, most men out there don't really think about the physiology of the testosterone. They just think the more testosterone, the better. Not understanding that testosterone, when it reaches many of the target tissues has to be converted into its active metabolites to give you the benefits of testosterone. All right, so when you compare the serum DHT levels of treating injections and transdermal delivery systems, there is a significant increase in serum levels of DHT with the transdermals. And this is of course due to the high concentration of 5-alpha reductase enzymes in the skin. But now when it comes to measuring levels of DHT, it's important to understand that the circulating levels of DHT in response to testosterone therapy do not correlate with those found in androgen sensitive tissues like the prostate and skin, for example. Now, this is due to the local regulatory mechanisms that tightly control intracellular androgen homeostasis. Intracellular concentrations of DHT are independent of circulating levels of DHT. DHT works in a paracrine fashion and is made in the target tissues. So even though you significantly raise DHT in a transdermal delivery system, it has no effect on the intracellular levels. So you just mentioned hair loss. So one of the most common side effects of testosterone therapy is, of course, hair loss. Now, it only occurs in those with a genetic predisposition, as it did in you, but it's still one of the most common side effects. Now, any method of delivery that increases free testosterone and increases DHT can cause hair loss in those that are susceptible. We all know that. But men think that a transdermal method raises the DHT high levels higher. Therefore, it must cause more hair loss. Well, that increase in serum DHT is not the mechanism of how it causes hair loss. It's the free testosterone that enters the hair follicle where it is converted into DHT, which will cause hair loss and not the circulating levels of DHT. And people need to remember there's only a limited number of androgen receptors for the DHT to bind to. And once those receptors are fully saturated, raising DHT any further will have no effect. So if a man's DHT receptors, for instance, are fully saturated DHT level of 70, then raising it three or four times that will have no further effect on hair loss because it can't exert an effect. There's no receptor to bind to. It's important to know also that those receptors are also fully saturated at a fairly low testosterone level. In fact, in the prostate, it's 250 nanograms per deciliter. Anything above that has no effect on prostate tissue because the androgen receptors are fully saturated. Yeah. Now, I actually can think of maybe one or some instances where the transdermals will cause more hair loss than the injections. Now, we've already discussed that the transdermals can raise free testosterone levels better than the injections for any given total in the same man. Therefore, if you have a more free testosterone, you have more testosterone to be converted into DHT at the cellular level. Now, if you didn't get a high level of free testosterone injections and weren't doing it daily, well, then a transdermals is going to raise your free testosterone levels better. They're going to be consistently elevated and it can saturate your receptors and cause more hair loss in that instance. But it's once again related to the level of free testosterone. All right. But if you raise free testosterone to the same level on injections, as you do on cream, and you have a stable level of free testosterone, such as that with daily injections, then you will have an equal amount of hair loss. Now, the takeaway message is it's not the serum DHT levels exerting the effects, but instead the intracellular levels of DHT from the free testosterone. So you'll see guys, you know, trying to manipulate their DHT levels by applying the, the, the you know, the cream to the scrotum, and then some on the 
you know, upper inner arm or top of their foot behind their knee, because I want to lower that DHT. They need to understand it has, it's not going to have any effect on your hair loss. Mm -hmm. It'll have an effect on your free testosterone potentially, but not hair loss. We've already also established you can apply the cream anywhere that you have skin from head to toe. Let them, it's just the scrotal skin for two reasons, better levels in most instances, reduce risk of transference. All right. So the, your listeners are then going to be asking this, I'm sure. Well, then why do 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like Propecia work for hair loss, Dr. Nichols? I mean, they lower serum DHT levels, and that has to be the mechanism. You're just wrong. Well, understand that the effectiveness of those 5-alpha reductase inhibitor resides at the level of the hair follicle. Lowered follicular concentrations of DHT, not a reduction of circulating DHT because that's not been shown to correlate with male androgenic alopecia. Well, how do we know this? Well, Stephen, this is why we're all scientists that we have to look at medical studies. So in 2010, there was a study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine where they, you know, gave men transdermal DHT. All right. Now, these men were exposed to exceptionally high levels of DHT in response to a daily application of DHT for 24 months, two years. Their DHT levels exceeded 700 nanograms per deciliter and some even over a thousand, which is over 10 times the normal range. And what they found was that the DHT was not associated with acne, male androgenic alopecia, or other androgen-associated skin pathology. Right. So just like with estradiol, when you take a medication to lower serum DHT levels, you lower levels at the cellular level and therefore lose the beneficial effects of DHT on those tissues. And this is, of course, the cause of the post finasteride syndrome which includes persistent sexual, neuropsychiatric, and physical symptoms. So that's why we don't want to block the active metabolites of testosterone because we're going to pay a price in other tissues and other areas. We may protect our hair, but we'll pay a price somewhere else. So that's the that's kind of the, the, the misconceptions about DHT. And that uh, so those serum levels really don't mean anything. OK, they, they, they don't mean anything. And that's why I point out to men that, look, if you go to any forum, where the majority of men on those forums are injecting. And what are they complaining about? The major complaints are going to be acne and hair loss, and yet they're injecting. So you don't have to raise DHT a lot to get hair loss. But when we go to creams and we're raising that free testosterone levels and consistently raising it with that nice little sine wave, you can have a little more hair loss than a man that didn't get adequate, consistent free testosterone levels on the injections. All right. So I hope I explained that. Uh, a little bit uh, to where it's understandable. You're a dermatologist. So tell me if there's anything that we kind of missed in there or that we can add to it. Yeah, perfectly, uh, perfectly, uh, Keith. But um, I guess uh, some uh, bio uh, availability um, in between, uh, there's uh, in between people, there's difference. One will uh, absorb better on the scrotal skin than the other still, uh, of course. But I guess in all studies has been shown uh, absorption um, on genital skin is eight times higher than on whatever skin in the same individual. So um, I, I guess you're right. It's the best spot to uh, apply it um, next to the benefits on the uh, transference, of course. Well, it, well, it's close. It's close as we can almost get to a mucous membrane almost because it's so thin skinned and highly vascular. That's just really all there is to it. But look, before we started using the scrotal skin, all right, 20 years ago, we got, I got good levels applying it to the, you know, uh, skin of the, the, the upper shoulder, neck, you know, upper pectoral region, you know, as long as it's a hairless region, you can get good levels, but you just got consistently good levels and you got levels utilizing less cream by going to scrotal skin. And once again, the incidence of transference dropped dramatically. When somebody applies to the neck, upper shoulder, upper chest region, you got to remember if you're holding a baby, if your wife sleeps, you know, they lay down to watch a movie together and they're, they're exposed to that face to your skin there. You're going to have some issues of transference. There's really a lot of times, not a lot of direct skin to skin contact with that scrotal skin. I mean, you know, and some guys are say, Oh yeah, well, you know, when I apply my white flats to go down and do certain things. Well, look, you, well, that's what I talked about earlier. We, it's a mature population of men. We've told you how to avoid transference. If, you, if you're going to apply it and 30 minutes later, your, your wife or girlfriend's going to go do that, go wash it off. OK, just mm -hmm. go wash it off or don't if you know that's going to happen, don't apply it and, uh, and, and, and then apply it afterwards. All right.